Hey everybody, come on in. Come on in. I know some of you guys on YouTube are like, what? Another channel? She's coming to us live on another channel? I apologize for any confusion. Um, but it is what a T.I. is. <laughs> Let me get a little drink. I always get thirsty when I be doing my lives. But, um, hey, everybody on Instagram. Make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel. I have two YouTube channels that I'm using. Um, the main one is Tanya's Primetime TV slash Media Reviews. Um, and the secondary one, the one I'm going live on tonight is Tanya, uh, I forgot. Tanya knows no limit. Now, what had happened was, you guys, for those of you who um, don't know already, but my other YouTube channel, which is Tanya's Primetime TV Media Reviews, um, <clears throat> which I'm still going to upload videos on, but right now I'm having some kind of discrepancy with one of my YouTube videos, and so I can't go live right now over there. Unfortunately, but I can upload, I can record and upload videos still over there. But for all my live reviews in the meantime and in between time, this will be the channel that I will uh, schedule my lives on and do my lives on. And I'll still upload videos um, on the other channel because I still want to be active over there for when I can go live again. And because all the people who are already subscribed to that channel who have yet to find out about this channel, I'm going to be letting them know on the videos to come over to the other channel. So anyway, the people on uh, Instagram, thanks for tuning in tonight. You can always still catch me on this Instagram channel, which is um, Tanya Primetime TV. For those of you on YouTube who don't know, my Instagram is Tanya Primetime TV. So make sure you uh, like this video. Make sure you subscribe to this channel. Make sure you share. Please share, share, share so we can get the word out that this is the channel that I'll be using uh, for the meantime until I can go live back on my original channel. But also just to let you know, this Tanya uh, Knows No Limit channel, I created this um, a while back. It was supposed to be used eventually <laughs> for just my personal channel. I was going to have my uh, reviews channel, and then I was going to have my personal channel where I just talk about whatever, whenever, however. Um, but I didn't really ever use it. So I guess <laughs> I'm about to get some use out of it now. <laughs> but anyway, so that's the 411 <laughs> on um, why I'm using this channel. Uh, Tanya knows best. Uh, <clears throat> Tanya knows no limit. I can't even remember the name of the channel. I've been having the channel for a while. Just <sighs> y'all should have seen me trying to figure out my password. I'm like, what's that other channel that I had already? But anywho, I don't know. You know, YouTube messes with you sometime, and you know your videos. You got to be extra careful. You got to be just extra careful. And I wasn't extra careful, I guess. But I'm waiting to hear something back. But in the meantime and in between time, um, again, please make sure you share this channel. Tanya knows best. This is the channel I'll be going live with for the meantime with my reviews. So um, tonight we're going to be going over uh, T.I. and Tiny Friends and Family Hustle. I don't know how many of you guys have tuned in for that show yet. But this is episode four that we are on. And it's called... Uh, boss mamas. <laughs> Let me make sure I got that right <laughs> because I didn't type it in. Did I type it in? Nope. <laughs> Hold on, y'all. I gotta make sure I give y'all the right name of the show. I always try to be a little accurate as I can. I'm sorry, as accurate as I can. Okay, it's called Boss Moms. Let me change that because I'm gonna have to put that uh title down. So everybody who's watching, let me know you're here. Comment in the chat. I don't know who's here unless you comment <laughs> because uh, YouTube shows you. Um, see, Ti and Tiny Friends and Family Hustle. YouTube shows you who's um, shows you how many people are watching, but they don't show you who exactly is watching. So make sure you comment in the chat. Let me know here. Say hey. <laughs> Say boo. <laughs> Love your new channel, something. <laughs> Friends and family 
Hustle Review Season 1, Episode 4, titled Boss Moms. How many boss moms we got out there? I think I can consider myself a boss mom. I got like two, three, four, eleven jobs. So, you know, taking care of my kids and doing what I got to do. One in college, one about to go to college. I think I can consider myself a boss mama. But anywho, um, the show starts off with Latoya Lucky and Rashida um, supporting Toya on the set of uh, Toya's Mama and Me bedtime modeling video shoot. Um, I was kind of shocked to see Rashida there, but you know, should have known they all run in the same circles, but still, you know, I was kind of shocked to see Rashida there, but you know, I love me some Rashida by the way. So no shade there. I do love me some Rashida. Um, I guess, uh, Toya has started this, um, this line of, uh, what she call it? Uh, bedazzled, bedazzled bonnets. And what y'all think about those bonnets? Because I think I might have to get me one. <laughs> the one she was wearing was really, really cute. It had like all the jewels and stuff, you know, around the uh, around the head part of the bonnet and everything. I thought that was kind of cute. And besides that, she was saying that, you know, it's not just a bonnet that, you know, you put on your head at night. But she said it's really um, geared for keeping your hair moisturized. For those of us ladies, we already know, you know, sometimes our hair gets dry, sometimes it breaks off. And she was saying she used to have an issue with edges. And I mean, that's a good, <laughs> that's a good seller right there. I mean, because we all know somebody who needs some help with their edges, <laughs> whether they fell out or got pulled out. <laughs> So uh, that would be a good investment and I have no issues with my edges, but just the point that um, It's supposed to help, you know, keep your hair moisturized while you're sleeping I like that and it's cute. It's cute. You like to go to bed cute Shoot, sure, you know when your man laying there and you know you got all the stuff on your face and got your hair wrapped up and you know But anywho, I like it But um, remember last episode I kind of gave y'all a little bit of rundown on Toya's mother. You know, for those of you who might not have watched the old show that Toya used to be on, um, her mother used to be strung out really, really bad on cocaine for many, many years. And Toya was like her main, you know, caretaker, her main provider. She made sure she ate. She made sure she, you know, was safe, made sure she had some place to go, you know, uh, clothes, you know, money, all that. Even though she did, you know, if you know anybody who, uh, or if you have anybody in your family who is addicted to drugs or alcohol or pain meds or, you know, whatever, and you see them out there unable to take care of themselves and you kind of want to take care of them, but you kind of like don't want to keep enabling them, enabling them, well, that's what she was going through. But finally... Her mom got clean. She's been clean for two and a half years, which was very, very hard for her to do, especially with the fact that she lost both of her sons. Like they said on the last episode, um, Toya lost her brothers in a shooting. Um, I, I, I give her mom so much credit because going through them deaths like multiple children and you're addicted to drugs, a lot of people would never have been strong enough to get off of drugs. So I give her credit for that. Um, but Toya was like, you know, my mom been off of drugs and everything and she's still taking care of her, you know, still providing for her, but she wants her mom to get out there and try to, you know, start over getting her feet wet, you know, trying to take care of herself. And she thinks she has the perfect solution. Uh, her friend, well, actually, is her manager, but I'm thinking this might be her friend too because um, she just seems like, you know, if, if you can go to your manager and just get your mom hired <laughs> and your mother, you know, no shade, but your mother been addicted to drugs for like 20, 30, 40 years and you can just get her hired just like that. I'm assuming the management is more than just a manager and client, you know, situation. So they probably real cool. But anyway, she thought she had the perfect solution. So she called her uh, manager, Rick, and he owns a hot dog shop. So he she told him, you know what? My mom needs a job. Uh, she needs to, you know, get her feet wet, get back into the job market and everything. And do you have a position for her? Oh, uh, he did. <laughs> he did. And Toya, when she took her to um the hot dog shop, 
her mom, I guess, okay, like I said, if y'all watched the old episode, the old TV show that Toya used to be on, um, her mom is a great cook, like really, really a great cook. And she assumed that she was going to be in this hot dog shop cooking. But I mean, come on, it is a hot dog shop. I don't know if she really thought about it before she went there with Toya, but it's a hot dog shop. So how much cooking do you think would have been involved? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you can cook a whole pot of hot dogs in like five minutes. But anyway, um, <laughs> she just assumed that she was going to be cooking. But when he took her back there, and he was like, oh, my God, I can't wait. Can't wait to see what you can do in this kitchen. He was all happy and excited. And then she gets back there and she's walking over to the food prep area, you know, ready to cook. I'm, I'm ready, you know, whatever, grabbing utensils and stuff. And he said, uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. <laughs> and he moves her over to the, to the sink area. And she was like, not feeling that. Like, no, honey. And she has such a country uh, New Orleans, New Orleans. That's how you say it. Not New Orleans, New Orleans. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my gosh. She's like, no, nah, baby. No, nah, baby. <laughs> I did not come here to wash no dishes, baby. <laughs> I was hollering. She was upset. And then I'm thinking, okay, she really don't want to wash these dishes, but she knows she needs a job. Toya is depending on her to try to get on her own feet and she's just going to suck it up and, you know, work at the hot dog shop till she can, you know, find something better or maybe move up to cook, move up to manager. Toya was like, Ma, you can even probably own your own hot dog shop, you know, because I guess the man probably has like, I don't know, a franchise or, you know, something like that. I don't know. But anyway, she was like, no, baby. Nope, nope. And she walked out that shop. And called Toya. Didn't even tell the dude she was leaving. <laughs> the manager she was leaving. And she just walked out the shop. Toya driving. Hello? Because you know Toya got that accent too. She was like, um, you need to come get your mama. Nope, I can't do this, baby. <laughs> I'm not washing no dishes, baby. <laughs> I was rolling. Oh, my God. It's like she... I don't know if she doesn't want to work, period, because she has been taken care of for such a lengthy amount of time, or she really just was upset because of the dishes, because she just didn't want to wash dishes. But Toya swung back around, and she picked her up <laughs> to take her back home. <laughs> but anyway, um, over to Monica. Uh, Monica with her blue hair. You know she wear a different color hair every, every episode. But anyway, you could have never, never forced me to believe that Monica was a singer and a mortician. I was like, what? Monica, you work with dead people? You see dead people? No. Mm -mm. I would have never in a million years believed that Monica was a singer and part-time morticianist or whatever you what would you call it if it's a female mortician for a male morticianist? I don't know. But anywho, um, if I wouldn't have seen it with my own eyes, I would not believe it. But I get it. I get it. Um, Monica, you know, I understand why she chose this profession. A lot of people would be like, why would you want to be a mortician? You're a singer. You made millions of dollars. Like, you done toured the world. You got so many albums. I don't know how many albums she got, but I got every single one of them. I think she has like seven or eight and about to come out with another album. So why would you want to be a mortician? But when she got to explain it and basically um, what she was saying was people have always like gave her credit and shout outs and complimented her on how she does makeup, you know, for herself and other people. And I know we all have probably been at somebody's funeral. If it's not somebody real close to us, we attended a funeral with somebody else who was close to us for support. And you probably walked up to the casket and was like, who that? Is we at the right funeral? We can't be at the right funeral. Who is that? I don't know that person. That ain't my mama. That ain't my auntie. That ain't Day Day. Who that? <laughs> because they like do awful jobs. Some of these funeral homes, they really need to take some cosmetic classes. Um, 
some beauty consulting classes because they will make your loved one look dead times five. Like, really? Y'all didn't even try to blend in the colors to their natural color. Y'all didn't try to make the hair, the wigs or whatever match the face. I mean, sometimes the morticians, they just don't care. They take all our money, five, ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 for a funeral, but they make our loved ones look like, okay, they already did. They already did. But do they got to look like a ghost? <laughs> do they have to look like a ghost? <laughs> but anyway, so I understand why Monica took up that profession and became, you know, a mortician. Because she wanted to make sure that when people go see their loved ones in the casket, you know, this is like the last time, even though their body not there. They soul not there, they body there, but, you know, their flesh is there. You know how it goes. Their spirit is already gone. Once you take that last breath, your spirit already gone. But still, that's the last opportunity for you to look at your loved one before they get buried, before they get, um, you know, some people, they don't have the money to bury their, you know, loved one. So they might have to, you know, to go, go the alternate route, but still. Make them look beautiful. That's that's what Monica is all about. Make them look as beautiful as she can with what she has to work with. So anyway, shout out to Monica for thinking about other people like that. But then, you know what I was saying? Um, As far as uh, beauty, I used to work for Mary Kay. Y'all might not know that. <laughs> but I used to work for Mary Kay for probably about... It wasn't long. It was probably like a year or so. That was some hard work, boy, trying to get people to buy that expensive uh, makeup. That was some hard work. I was like, I had the stickers and the bumper stickers and the cars and the stuff on my house doors. And I had everything and was doing facials and makeovers. And, and that's some hard work. That's some hard work. So shout out to the people who do Mary Kay because that's actually, you know, where I get most of my makeup from. But anywho, um... What I was, uh, what I found interesting um, about Monica was she was talking to her cousin about her father and how they don't have a close relationship like she wished they could have. Um, after her parents had got divorced, her I, this is why I like these reality shows, especially when it's people that we have been following for years and years and we never really know what it's like to be in their shoes or what they go through every day. And sometimes you just want to peep inside their real world instead of them on stage dancing and singing. And you know what I'm saying? So it's nice to hear that these people are just like us almost in every single way. They have real problems, real issue, real family trauma. And um, when she was talking about her father, how after her parents divorced, you know, they weren't as close. Oh, hey, everybody on Instagram. I just see some people checking in. How y'all doing? Make sure y'all um go subscribe to my new YouTube channel that I'm using right now. It's called Tanya Knows Best. Because my original YouTube channel, for some reason, I can't go live on there. So I'm using my other YouTube channel that I created a while back that I never really used. Um, so it's called Tanya Knows No Limit. So make sure you go over there because that's where I'll be doing most of my lives for the meantime. But anywho, that's Tanya Knows No Limit on YouTube. But um, so her cousin, you know, he suggested to her, you know, go talk to your father, you know, go try to work things out. He really loves you. She really loves him. So she's going to go speak to her dad, you know, about their relationship and see if they can try to create a stronger bond, you know, between each other. But our guy T.I. is back. Tiny are, you know, T.I. and Tiny, they are back from their trip from Trinidad. Uh, remember at the beginning of the first episode, uh, T.I., he was trying to get Tiny to go on a trip with him. He had It was actually a business trip. But he wanted her to come along. And when he asked her, he was like, oh, you can come if you want to. You can join me if you want to. But I think he didn't really ask her um, outright because he probably thought she was going to say no because they have still been, you know, not really, not really on the same page lately ever since that last incident, you know, 
when he was caught grabbing, squeezing on some girl's booty, and somebody caught it on film, and it exploded all over social media. So anyway, they're trying to get back on the page, same page, but eventually she caved in because their anniversary is coming up, and she wanted to go because that would be a great way for them to celebrate. So anyway, they went. They came back. They just got back literally from their vacation. And it seems like that was the right thing to do. Because didn't they seem a lot happier when they came back? I mean, <laughs> they seemed like they were in some good spirits. And Tiny definitely seemed like she was in better spirits after they came back from Trinidad. I don't know what all they were doing over there. But um, I know they was doing a lot of massaging each other. <laughs> because she was like, uh, Tim. Um, why don't you stay tonight? Because he was about to go to his actual home. Uh, I guess the second home, Tiny said the second home was their home. But, you know, with all the tabloids and all the blogs and everything we heard, you know, over the past like year or so, Tiny had so-called got her another house, her a separate house, and that was Tiny's house. But come to find out from watching the episode, Tiny was like, you know this is our house. So I'm like, okay, did they buy this house together? Did T.I. give her the money? I don't know. But anywho, that's not where he sleeps on a regular basis. So he was about to go home, and she was like, Tim, why don't you spend a night? Why don't you stay over here so you can um give me a good old massage? <laughs> he was like, hold up. We just came from vacation, girl. Didn't you get enough of massaging over there? Are you still that loose? I was gagging. I was like, no, you didn't call her loose. That ain't what you call your woman. <laughs> You do not call ever, ever, don't ever, 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 fellas, call your woman loose at all. That that's mm -mm. that's not a word we take too kindly. But anyway, they was cracking me up. But her, even her mom noticed like the change, the difference. She was like, "Y'all seem like y'all really, you know, had a great time." And they was like, "Yeah, we did." So she's happy about that because she really don't want them to get a divorce. She was like, "Please tell me the divorce is off the table." T.I., you know, he has a way with words. But in so many words, he said the divorce is off the table right now. You know, T.I., I love me some T.I., but you are asking him a simple question. Is the sky blue today, T.I.? And he will give you like 10,000 words from the encyclopedia <laughs> before he says, yes, I do agree that the sky is blue. <laughs> Y'all know I'm not lying. <laughs> Y'all know I'm not lying, but I'm glad they a little they on the same page again. But um, you know what? Uh, I thought the conversation with King and Damani was real cool. Um, those brothers that it's no matter what. Like, okay, I think I said in my first episode review that no matter what trials and tribulations the parents go through, no matter how many women T.I. mess with, how many booties he grab, how many times they break up, how many times they drag through social media, the kids always seem like so cool and down to earth and laid back. And, and, and you know, they seem really, really close. And so when Damani and King was outside talking, <laughs> Damani asked King, he said, so what's up with you, bro? Um, uh, how's you and your girl? And Damani, I, I mean, King was like, you know, we all right. Well, you know, we all right. And he was like, uh, you need to watch that. You need to be careful. Basically trying to get him a little advice, you know, as an older brother to a little bro, you know, be careful. Be careful. You don't want to get yourself involved in something that you can't get out of, meaning maybe having babies, maybe catching diseases. You know, he was trying to tell them not in a mama pop type of way, like, boy, don't be having sex. Da, 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 da. You know, be careful, bro. You know, the, the girls, you just got to be careful. Then he turned around and asked Damani, so how's your sex life? <laughs> I was like, Damani, don't answer that. Don't answer that. Change the subject. Please change the subject, Damani. And he did just that. He was like, I'm sorry, bro, but I just don't feel comfortable talking to you like that. <laughs> King didn't like that, though. He was like, y'all always asking me about my girls and all this, but I can't ask y'all no questions. Give it a few years, King. Give it a few years, and you ain't going to have to ask their money anything because you're going to already know <laughs> what it be like. But anywho, I thought that was cool, you know, their relationship and everything. But um, 
y'all, I don't know if any of you guys are watching who live down in the A or some of y'all who might have visited there and got a chance to see, you know, the uh, Tramp Museum. We were down there in, when did we go? July. We were down there the second week of July. And was it the second week? Like the 17th, something like that this summer. I didn't know about no trap museum when I went down there in the summer. Uh, I know this show was filmed months and months ago. You know how the reality shows go. So I don't know how long the trap museum been open since the show. But I would really love to visit the trap museum. Um, you know, I'm a, I'm a 70s baby. But, you know, I fell in love with rap and trap music hip-hop and stuff in the 80s, you know, like most people did around our age. So I would definitely, definitely love to be um, to be able to visit that. They didn't quite finish it. During this episode, T.I. wasn't quite pleased because I guess he's on a deadline and he expected it to be all complete in a certain amount of time. They weren't quite done with that, but <laughs> again, I'm anxious to see, you know, what it looks like and also to visit it firsthand. I think that would be really cool. But um, Jermaine Dupree, Jermaine Dupree, the Jermaine Dupree. Speaking of rap and hip hop, um, we see him and Tiny, you know, sitting around chilling and discussing the tour because they were planning for the twenty fifth year anniversary of So So Death. And so Tiny was sitting around, you know, trying to figure out, you know, what's all going on, who's all going to be involved. Uh, neither one of them. <laughs> <laughs> Neither one of them really seemed like they wanted to approach Candy about the situation because if you were watching um, the other show that they had, uh, I can't remember the reality show right now, but it was with Candy and it was the girls. God, what was the name of the show? Anyway, they were um, going through the tour and going through uh, getting ready for the tour and making decisions and they were getting into it. All the time. And then also, if you watch uh, Housewives of Atlanta, you also got a little bit of, you know, Candy from there discussing about the group Escape. That is their own personal group Escape. I'm really glad that they all decided to eventually go on tour because at first Candy was not feeling it. Jermaine Dupree, he didn't even want to approach the subject to Candy. He was like, Tiny, why don't you do it? You closer to her. You closer to all the women. So why don't you ask Candy, you know, would she be willing to do it? Because they all know Candy didn't want to have nothing to do with no tour, nothing to do with Escape getting back together. Um, she claimed she didn't want to tarnish the name and I think it's like, okay, sometimes when groups end, when they disperse, when they separate, sometimes years later, they kind of start around talking again, getting along, putting their heads together. You know, maybe we should go out again, try to create another album. It usually never works. It usually never works. They might get an album out barely before they the first again somebody arguing fighting or whatever so i think that's what she meant because they didn't end on good terms the first time and she's like you know what it's done we made a lot of money you know we still making money just leave it at that just leave it at that but anyway i'm glad that she decided to you know participate with them but um Plus, it's the 25th year anniversary. All of So So Death was going to be there. I mean, who wouldn't want to go? I would pay some good money. See, I need to move down to the A. <laughs> I need to move somewhere because, I mean, they have, like, the best concerts down there. It was so much to do down there when we went to the A. We was there for a week. We had a laundry list of places that we wanted to visit. But if anybody ever told you how bad the traffic is in Atlanta, how huge Atlanta is, believe every bit of it. The traffic is horrible. It takes you five days to get from downtown back to your hotel. I mean, we didn't get to visit hardly any of the places that we had on our list. Hardly any. But before I left there, I was like, we definitely visiting the um, African-American, you know, the Black Museum down there. So we did that. We visited Coca-Cola. Um, what else did we visit? Uh, oh, my God. We visited CNN and some other place. I can't remember off the top of my head. 
Oh, 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 was it, uh, is it Sea, not Sea World? Um, that, that aquatic, that aquatic place, I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head, but I have tons and tons of pictures on my Facebook page from, uh, from the trip, but it was really nice. I love Atlanta and I will go back soon. But anyway, they had like the top people from So So Death Escape, Jermaine Dupree, of course, Jermaine Dupree, the creator, but, um, Anthony Hamilton, Youngblood, Franchise Boys, Bow Wow, The Brat, Jagged Edge, Bone Crusher, Jaquan, um, you know, and more. So, you know, who wouldn't want to go? So I'm really glad Candy decided to do that because, like Tiny said, it just wouldn't look right for the other three ladies to go, even though they continued on as a group after Tiny, I mean, after, uh, she was okay. Candy said she'll tour with them, but she didn't want to, uh, make new music with them. So they, instead of escape, the other three ladies are now going by Escape 3 because there's three of them left. So she decided to go on tour with them. She just didn't want to make new music with them. But that's cool because all the other groups there, you know, everybody from the other groups was going to be there. Everybody from Jagged Ed, you know. So, anywho. But uh, back to Toya and her mom. <laughs> Again, Toya thought it was a good idea for her mom to get hired at the hot dog company, which her manager owns. It didn't quite work out that way. Um, she basically was like, I'm not cooking. I'm not washing no dishes. I want to cook, you know, da, 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 da. But I guess Toya figured, you know, um, I need some help with my mom. So somebody recommended that she go see that counselor, that therapist, Sherry. And I don't know if I would have been so, went so far as to hire a therapist or consult with a therapist because my mom doesn't want to wash dishes at a restaurant but i think what it mainly is about is toya is afraid that her mother like she kept saying um an idle hands or idle idle mind idle hands is a devil's playground and we all heard that many many times before and it's true it's true especially when you're talking about somebody who is either always in trouble, always in and out of jail, somebody on and off drugs, somebody, you know, something like that. So I think she's more scared of her mother jumping back into the drugs and not having nothing to do, no hobby, no, you know, it's kind of like, compare, okay, I used to smoke cigarettes for like 15 years. I quit 10 years ago. Halloween, every Halloween is my anniversary because that was when I quit smoking 10 years ago. Um, it was on Halloween, but it's like when you have a drug addicted to cigarettes, alcohol, whatever, when you're bored and you don't have nothing to do, what you do, you pick up a cigarette, pick up a drink, you know, it happens. So I think that's what her main concern was. Not so much as make my mom understand why she needs a job. She's scared that her mom is going to resort back to drugs and end up back on the street y'all if y'all didn't see that oh my god i wish um i'm gonna put the link in the chat for the tv show that uh toya has starred in years ago and like almost the entire show dealt with her mother living on the streets she was strung out y'all like super strung out to see her now today clean looking beautiful hair laid i mean her mom has been through a lot, and so has Toya. But anyway, hopefully she can get her mom on the right feet and get her somewhere working. And as a matter of fact, I wonder why Toya won't hire her herself. Because Toya has businesses. Toya's an entrepreneur. I mean, she has the mommy and me. <laughs> so I don't know. Maybe maybe she'll decide to do that. But then on the other side of town, we have uh, Tiny and Candy, and they're chilling at the lady gang, the old lady gang, you know, uh, Candy's restaurant, um, that her and her mother and auntie run, and Tiny, you know, she just popped up, and Candy's like, what you doing here? Well, I just came to get a bite to eat with a side of, would you please, please, please join us on this tour? <laughs> That was actually when she had, you know, came to the restaurant. She had sat down with Toy, um, with uh, Candy. And from there, you actually saw what was the majority of Candy's situation, her issue, her beef with, you know, touring with the ladies. And we knew back in the day, they all like would argue and fight. And I think it has something to do with like the sisters too. Because, you know, it's two sisters in the group. And it was sometimes the sisters 
you know, pitted against Candy, and I think Tiny was like the the peacemaker, you know, the middle ground, the one who tried to get everybody to come to terms and, you know, work together. But, you know, she was sitting there and she was telling her, you know, y'all don't understand what I've been through. I was going to put that on my thumbnail as as well, you know, but I just put a picture up there. But she was like, you don't understand because you didn't have to do, you didn't have to deal with the situation. So now we get more information on why Candy refuses to join the group again. It was like, all the other ladies, it seems like they were all spoiled and they all got extra stuff all the time. The best rooms, the best hotel rooms, they, they rooms had like all kind of food and, you know, stuff. And then she was like, I always got a tiny room and I never got all the stuff y'all had. I mean, it might seem petty to some people looking in, but it's kind of like a brother, sister, sibling relationship. One of y'all always getting brand new shoes and the other person always getting leftovers, you know, or hand-me-downs. <laughs> so I kind of understand where Candy was coming from. But again, in the end, she did tell T Tiny that she would think about it. And then she did decide, you know, to go ahead and tour with the group. But um, I don't know, again, as far as like uh, if she'll ever change her mind and decide to... I, I don't know. How y'all feel about that? Would y'all like to see Candy back with Escape? Like, permanently making new music? I just think her voice. I mean, I love her with Escape. I love her by herself. I have both of her albums that she put out after she um left Escape. And I just think her at it with them is just just amazing music. So I'm crossing my fingers. I'm keeping my fingers crossed that maybe one day she will decide to at least make one more album with the ladies. <laughs> so I'm going to keep my fingers crossed. But anyway, um, as far as at the end of the show, it was like um, Candy and Tiny and the sisters. They were all sitting around. Candy walked in. She was like, hey, ladies, you know, giving everybody hugs. Y'all, it wasn't five seconds later. Not even five seconds later, they was arguing, like really arguing. You couldn't hear what nobody was saying. Candy was screaming. Tiny was screaming. The sisters were screaming. And we wonder why they all fell out. <laughs> We wonder how they all fell out. I don't even know how they made it on that tour together for the entire tour. But um, <laughs> I'm still keeping my fingers crossed. I don't care what y'all say. Y'all might not even care if Candy ever sings with Escape again. But if you was from that era, from that era with the real R&B music, with the real hip hop music, I mean, it's just... It's just music that we can never live without. It's like there are certain albums, there are certain um, artists that we get introduced throughout our life. Escape is one of those female groups that <laughs> you could have never imagined not entering your life. And on top of that, um, it's just like, like I said, that real R&B music. I miss that so much. Um I'll be looking, y'all. I'll be looking for some good R&B people out here now. And it's a, it's a few of them, but not like before. Not like before. But anyway, y'all let me know what y'all thought about the episode. Um, some people are already tired of the season. <laughs> They're like, I just can't get into this, you know, or yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I actually like it. I actually like it probably because I like, I really love um, Escape, I really love Toya, Monica, I mean, I love them all, and T.I. with his crazy self, him too, so anyway, y'all let me know what y'all thought about the episode, um, again, let me know what you think about Escape, if you would love to see Candy get back with Escape and actually make new music, and also, how do you feel about, uh, Toya and her mom's situation, um, as far as Toya's mom refusing to work at that place if she had to wash dishes, 
how would you have handled that if that was your parent, if that was your mom or, you know, your father? Toya, she was getting real frustrated when she was in therapy. She was getting real frustrated. The therapist said, Toya, you have to quit enabling your mother. Let her be the mom. You have to stop playing the mom position. You are the daughter. You are the child. Give her the opportunity to be the mom. But again, I think Toya, I don't even know if Toya can do it. If she can let go of the chains like that, let go of the reins, I should say, because she's too scared that her mom might resort back to drugs if she doesn't have anybody there to take care of her and provide her and keep her off the streets. So anyway, y'all let me know what y'all thought about the episode. Um, Again, you guys, sorry about all the confusion with the two different channels. My old, my, I ain't gonna say my old channel because it's still over there. But, um, and I'm going to upload this video over there as well for the people who's, um, don't know that I got this other channel so they can know. Um, but for some reason, one of my videos, um, I, I just, YouTube, they basically put me on punishment. I'm in timeout until they figure out what's going on until I hear back from them. I'm disputing it, but, uh. I don't know. But anyway, I can't go live right now. So I'm going live from my other channel that has been just sitting around on YouTube not being used, which is this channel, Tanya Knows Best. Is that the name of it? <laughs> I don't even know the name. Like I said, I don't even know the name of the dog on channel. Um, it's Tanya. Hold up. I'm coming at you from the channel. Yeah, t why don't you say Tanya Knows Best? I'm sorry. The channel is Tanya Knows No Limit. <laughs> But anyway, you guys, um, on Instagram, you guys watching on Instagram, make sure you subscribe to my channel, Tanya Knows No Limits. All right. Thank you very much. You guys, remember to like the video before you leave the room. Also, make sure you subscribe to this channel and make sure you share, 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 share so we can get the word out a little better about this channel. All right. Thank you very kindly. And in the meantime and in between time, prime time squad, as usual, stay safe. Be blessed, and I'm out.